the work they believe can be done within each iteration based on the highest value features. When it's time to start planning your iterations, an important task called sizing and estimating is used to determine the amount of work your team can realistically accomplish. Sizing and estimating are both ways of gathering team insights into the effort of items in the product backlog. These insights inform the product owner on how to rank the product backlog. Sizing refers to assigning a relative number to indicate overall effort by the whole team, including designing, developing, testing, and more. The goal is to keep it simple. We size early in the process before we need precision. So we seek only a relative size. How does this backlog item compare to others? For example, how tall is the Empire State Building? How tall is your office building? Without knowing exact numbers, you can figure out which one is relatively taller than the other. As it turns out, the Empire State Building is 1,250 feet high. But I suspect you didn't need to know any of that. Additionally, the practice of sizing takes into account relative comparisons of complexity, effort, and doubt of items in the product backlog. The team doesn't need absolute values, but rather can compare current stories to past stories to get an initial course granularity view of how much work each item might require. There are a few sizing techniques. The one that offers the deepest insights is planning poker. In this approach, the team discusses each item in the product backlog, and then each team member chooses a playing card to represent the relative size, a point size. The team members then reveal their cards all at once. They might each have a different point. So the scrum master facilitates discussion. Why does Bob think the story is a three when Sue thinks it's a 13? Through discussion, aided by the product owner, the team comes to understand the story and to agree on a high-level design or approach. They eventually agree on a good enough relative size for the story. A mature Agile team has an average velocity. They know how many points they can deliver in a sprint or an iteration. Based on that, they can plan and forecast several iterations out by using this high-level sizing. Estimating brings us to the next level of granularity so the team can determine exactly which work will fit into the next iteration. To estimate a story is to understand exactly what tasks are required to complete it, who will perform those tasks, and how long those people think those tasks will take. Notice that sizing is a whole team generic assessment of the effort. Estimating takes into account exactly who's going to work on the story. Will we let the junior person take a little bit more time? Will we stretch someone's skills? Will the team expert knock out that task quickly? Estimating often happens in hours. It's a more refined estimate. We don't expect the previous sizing and points to translate into a specific number of hours because now we have more information. The story might have been elaborated. The acceptance criteria is clearer. We now know exactly who will work on the story. It's a new understanding of effort based on better information by design. We wait until the last responsible moment to estimate, when we have the most information possible. So to sum it up, sizing helps us forecast what we can deliver over the next several iterations. Estimating informs the actual task hours the team can commit to in the next iteration. Each of these techniques help the team to continuously improve how they plan and forecast their commitments into the future.